Okay, and here we are back. It's Monday, and it's hour three, and that means we take a look at the greatest catastrophe. And for some of you, this may sound a little absurd. Maybe you're new. The greatest catastrophe in known human recorded history, and that is the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. Words really fail me because it's far worse than a disaster. If you have been with us, you know that it is our contention, and we have every reason to say this, the entire North Pacific, virtually the entire North Pacific, is now dead of what used to be an incredibly bountiful canvas of sea life and living things. They're, they're gone. We do know that all up and down the Canadian West Coast and moving on down into Washington, Oregon, California, the sea life all along the coastline is gone or virtually gone. We've seen the stories about seals, sea lions, and other higher level mammals in the ocean died, dying, die-offs, whales, all kinds of problems. Anyway, it's a long story. We've been covering it for well over five years. Uh, from the beginning, uh, Yoichi Shimatsu is here, former Japan Times weekend editor, one of the world's truly great environmental reporters and scientists. Uh, comes on every, every Monday for over five years now. And let's find out where he is. Are you still in California? That's what I understand. Yeah, I'm still in California. Uh, my departure is sort of delayed. It's been a, you know, we're in the midst of a massive uh, security cyber warfare crackdown having yeah. to do with the events of the past two weeks here, yeah, yeah, which yeah. resemble what happened in Paris. And, and uh, I guess they're anticipating something like Brussels with flights delayed and canceled. Yeah. Uh, you get no news of this, of course. No, no, we're I in have a to. Uh, world now where yeah. uh, the great events of our time are not covered. And this is relevant to Fukushima because as we see, the problems we've had of getting just the basic facts, oh, we're any getting kind nothing. of scientific <laughs> truth out, the sabotage is blocked. Uh, we've seen a massive censorship of the news, you know, blackout, media blackouts. We've seen disinformation spun from the scientific community, from university research, you know, very respected universities, uh, which we understand are connected, of course, to military. Uh, defense. Oh, they, they feed on the military work. industrial complex money. Let's also yeah. say hello to Dana Durnford, who's standing by mm -hmm. in British Columbia now. There he is. Hi, folks. Thank you, Jeff. You're Hi, Dana. Yeah, speaking of the same thing up in Canada, this um, the, the massive kind of cover-up, the court case against Dana is kind of legal repression on very slim charges, you know, absurd charges. Repression, uh, which, reprisal, uh, outrageous. Yeah, cyber is hacking, I mean, yeah. cyber, uh, you know, cyber warfare against his website. Yeah. Uh, very similar, pervasive, massive state tactics, more, uh, you know, in line with countries of, with uh, fascist police forces and all that. And, and I only say this in the, in the context of these events of the last two weeks that rock the United States, you know, on both coasts of the United States, uh, here in California, the shooting at UCLA, the University of California system, on which we had hoped, and which in the beginning seemed so hopeful in uh, presenting scientific truth, but turned tail and joined the federal cover-up under massive pressure. Uh, we see the Santa Monica, you know, incident, uh, fellow, uh, who is not an Islamic, you know, guy coming in to hit the parade. And then we see in Florida, the shooting of this young singer at her concert. I think the key word here is music, her concert. Uh, and then followed by this massacre at this club, you know, this, uh, all reminiscent of what happened in Paris and in Brussels, despite the denials from the uh, White House, which yeah, want to say, well, yeah. this is just a lone gunman again. You know, we've heard this theory so many, so many times. Well, one of the survivors in the club in Orlando said the shooter said, mm -hmm. either on the cell phone or I don't know what he was, he was talking. He said there are four mm -hmm. people involved, one sniper mm -hmm. and two others. 
I don't know what sniper mm-hmm. means, maybe across the street trying to, to pick off second responders or first responders. Who knows? Probably why the uh, cops were pinned down. They won't well, tell you. We don't the know. They're not, I have yeah. never read that they were pinned down. I have read that one of the uh, survivors came out the front door. Actually, I heard this yeah. uh, from someone who heard it on one of the networks, came out and said to the police, why aren't you going in there? Or are you going in there? Just yeah. flabbergasted, and the cops didn't go in. They hung out they for three in. hours, uh, Yoshi, and I've pretty well yeah. come down hard on them because I, I find that inexcusable for police officers. Yeah. There were multiple entrances to that club. They could have stormed it. They could have taken that guy out. They knew from the witnesses, yeah. the survivors, that there was one guy with a gun. They should have gone yeah. right at Look, if you, you lose a cop or two, that's part yeah. Of the oath of office hey, they hey, take. Hey, 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 when they just raid a crack house in Florida, I mean, you know, Florida, famous, Miami Vice, right? Drug dealers go Absolutely. Lord. They blow out the back door. They blow out a wall, right? It's standard practice. It happens every, you know, every every week something like this is happening in Florida. Uh, they didn't do the thing that they would do against the crack house or some cocaine dealers, right? You could have gone in there with night vision and save yeah. lives. And now, yeah. now the police chief says that he apologizes. He's worried that maybe his SWAT team, and you know when they start shooting, those SWAT teams usually just go crazy. Maybe the SWAT yeah. team killed some of the hostages. I believe so, yeah. And uh, so this, this, this uh, uh, definitely the, uh, you know, the, this, this uh, standoff order uh, reminds us of that other great standoff our time, the standoff in Benghazi when the ambassador, oh, yeah. Chris, <laughs> Stephen, who, by the way, was gay, yeah. was sodomized before he was murdered yep. by the very mercenaries hired by the State Department, by Hillary Clinton, okay, who were shipping weapons into Syria from Libya. Uh, the same forces who killed and raped the U.S. ambassador, okay? Something right. like this going That's on right. in Florida. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, this is treachery. This is... A system that's gone badly wrong, a system that lies to us about everything, and a system now that is trying to put the, you know, a gag order on every person in this society, every person in the world. Uh, this is insane. Yeah, the I, I, I want to... Oh, there's madness. This is the it's, oh, madness. absolutely. I think it's, uh, as they say, post-Orwellian. I don't think George Orwell would believe it. And if you think it's bad it's, now, ladies and gentlemen and friends... If we, if we survive another couple of years, they will have put in place. It's coming like your credit score. You can't do anything without a good credit score. They will soon have, Yoshi and Dana, down here, a we'll call it a, a citizen score, just for fun. They're going to rate everyone and give them a number in terms of how favorable the state sees them. If you have a low number, it'll be like, like being put on a no-fly or a terrorist watch list. If your number is low, you're in trouble. They're going to have this. It's already being talked about. They put trial is, balloons yeah. I'm out. Sure it's, yeah. I'm sure it's already here for if, you know, you run a certain website or something or news program. <laughs> your email is regularly hammered, you know, yeah. news monitor or this, or this very show. You know, whenever I say some keywords, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're cut off, you know, by NSA, the White House, you know, the White House chief of staff. You've been I'm cut sure off many not. times. Many, many a time. When you just say that sensitive word, they just want to punch you, you know. They want to hit you and let you know that, you know, your ability to speak in dissent is totally a whim of theirs to allow you to do this before they crush you, you know, before that roof comes caving in. Oh, I, so that, is, it's, yeah, absolutely. It's worse, and, and it's worse than... You know, hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, while our attention is fixed on Florida, you, you have to understand everything began, uh, this cycle of uh, violence and began on July, f- I mean, uh, June 1st at UCLA, the shooting of a professor by uh, a uh, one of his uh, uh, PhD students, former PhD student came in, UCLA, in a scenario like Sandy Hook, very much. And, yeah, now you're being uh, messed with. You're cut off. If you, yeah, if you, yeah. You said Sandy Hook, and there you go. It's everything starts to get, you know. <laughs> but anyway, the the shooter is supposed to be a six foot white, a uh, six foot tall white guy, 
with a black shirt and black pants. Uh-huh. Turns out to be a very short Indian fellow in a beige polo shirt. Come on, folks. You know, we're not that That far isn't up. even close. Yeah, the gun. He had one gun. Yeah, you know, he owned one gun. Mm-hmm. Now they find a second gun in the office, and they find a gun in his car. Okay? Three guns. So, yeah, three guns instead of the one that he bought. Okay? Uh on and on. The door was somehow locked by one of the professors. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure that out. How does that happen? Yeah. How does well, a he professor... Said he held the door. He held the door. But that also... Hold on, Yoshi. You're breaking up. We lost you there. And I asked you about the door being locked. Uh, I couldn't figure that out. How do you lock a door from the outside easily? Part of that University of California. Well, see, now here, here we are again. Yoshi is talking about... Do the research. Yeah. I'm, Radiation. We're getting only about 10% of your words uh, since you started well, talking back, about then. that. Call back. I got it done. All right, Todd, okay. go ahead. We'll uh, hey, call Yoshi back. Yeah. Uh, very good. Hang up, Yoshi. Uh, Dana. Hi, Jeff. Okay. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here, and n- nothing... Things are as they seem sometimes, and often things are not as they seem. It's just like with Fukushima. We're not being told anything. When I ask all of you listening, wherever you are in the world, when is the last time you heard mention of Fukushima, the catastrophe there, or what it's doing to the Pacific Ocean? Anything. You don't even hear anything. Nothing. Have you heard anything, Dana? I haven't heard one news story, not one no. news report, nothing. I'm at it all the time. I don't stop. Hey, uh, that uh, YouTube singer that was killed, Christina Grimmy, she was, um, you know, laundered in the media as the voice uh, singer was killed. But she she had a couple of million followers, dedicated followers. She's been on. She's only a kid, right? But she's been doing it for about six years. I collect the artists myself. I know her. Uh-huh. And she didn't need the voice. The voice needed her. She brought a couple of million people to the voice. Very dedicated fans. Huh. But nobody knows anything about the killer. It's really interesting because, like, if you talk about MK Ultra, uh-huh. that was a prime example. These were all teeny boppers and everything that was following her. They were traumatized beyond imagination, rightfully so. Uh, but we don't see any kind of relationship whatsoever with the killer. Nothing whatsoever. They I know. Know. I know nothing about him except his picture and maybe one sentence, and that's all I know. I nothing. And the other guy worked for law enforcement at, at yeah. down in Florida, and you know that's a gun-free zone. Everybody slaughtered as usual. But how is it possible that the police didn't storm it? Blah blah blah. You know, none of that makes sense. Well, I put that up on the site within uh, a half an hour of of, uh, of the event. I I questioned yeah. the police, and then I used a nasty word to question them. Uh, I called them. No, it is weird. Right? Coward. That, they should have gone right in there. What what control now? What would the Marines have done, Dana? They, they're not going to sit on their butts for three hours. They'd go in there and take the guy out. Right. And now we got they're three hours. They go in there itching. and... They're itching the tangle. They got that's the equipment, right. They got the people. They got the monitor. They got the education. They got... I mean, they're, some of these guys are firing 5,000 rounds a day. I mean, these are bullseye every shot in, uh, in adverse conditions, too. And so yeah. they, they don't show up. And then there's no heralds with, with handguns anywhere. That's all it would have took. One guy with a handgun. This guy was randomly shooting people. They could, he could have been knocked down in a heartbeat. And it's just every time you have... Uh, How many people died on the floor of their wounds in three hours? Yeah, exactly. Bled to death. Or something, right? And so that was horrendous. There's another 50-odd that are in desperation trying to survive. But it, it was simply the... Um, gun, when you when you take away the guns in such a gun-populated country like yours, 300 million handguns or something, yet nobody had a handgun because everybody's terrified and all the laws they got in the place and everything else is, uh, how do you protect yourself... Like, if you got to wait for the police to show up and save you from being murdered, you will get murdered every freaking time. Excuse the language, because you'll get murdered every time without fail. That's right. So it's idiotic. And now they're calling for gun control. <laughs> oh, we got to disarm everybody that's legally got a gun. People. They're going to take those guns away from the criminals, I'll tell you. They're going to take them away from the terrorists, and we'll be safe. That logic is so insulting and stupid. It just it defies description. 
you got to take it away from everybody else first, and then everybody else is at these crazies' mercy. They're always well, going to have automatic, Yoshi. semi-automatic, whatever. In you Yoshi. back, Yoshi? Yeah, I'm back. And, and yeah, yeah, I think uh, Miss Grimmy, Christina Grimmy, you know, cause she was a, a, a very devout Christian. Um, she was uh, yeah. something like a younger version of Celine Dion. If she had gone on, she would have probably had reached the same sort of very wide, popular, powerful young singer. Uh, it's a real tragedy what happened. And then again, this fellow Loibel just shows up so reminiscent of how John Lennon was shot. By some guy, some guy showed no emotion, right? Didn't uh, didn't say anything, just walked up and blew him away. Very similar. So this has earmarks of uh, an MK Ultra mind control yeah. thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I and do. I think we so. know MK this, was massively yeah. developed there, also in Florida, in the, in, the, in the prison system. That's where, in that whole part of, kind of Atlanta, was where Whitey Ford was, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Boston gang leader. He was... Uh, put under MK in the prison there. So that whole area has had a whole record of this sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, just, uh, it, all these things that are so out in the open and we're so yeah. familiar with this stuff now, you know, the, the newborn thing, uh, the well, newborn we're becoming desensitized to it. The, 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 we're becoming it, desensitized to it. That's part of the game. Expect it. Yeah. We're kind of, it's just like a daily sort of occurrence now. It's just, Right. Truly shocking. And this this fellow Omar Mateen worked for G uh G four S. That used to be Wacken Hut Security. Was that uh, Wacken Hut? Oh yeah, it is Wacken Hut, yeah. It's a British owned now, but it yeah. what it is all of Wacken Hut was bought after many pro problems. And so G four S they protect ninety percent of the nuclear plants in the United States. You know? So well, there's there's the guy there's the kind of guy we want at a nuclear plant, right? Well, he apparently, though he was low ranking, he had a high security clearance. Uh, you know, Afghan, son of an Afghan citizen there, high security clearance, and, Wa and Wagon Hunt is moving uh, illegal aliens. So they said, other than Mexicans, OT uh, OTMs, right, from the border up into northern cities. Okay, in other words, these are people from Syria, Iraq. So he was involved potentially with a company. Yeah that moves uh, illegal Muslims into this country and, yeah. and plants and them it, around in cities. Yeah, and the employees are armed, are they armed security guys? So he was, uh, you know, trained and armed right. by that company, by, and they have a very close relationship with U.S. Army and all G4, that. For okay, go for sec, Yoshi. Go ahead, G4, Dana. G4S, there was another company that worked uh, security on September 11, 2001 at both airports and and uh, all four airports rather where the, the alleged terrorists got on the planes and and um, and then Ground Zero on top of that was the same company and they were aligned with G4S. G4S is an Israeli company for anybody who's not familiar, it's the biggest uh, security company on the planet. There we are again. They're always yeah. there. Yeah. They are so. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, they show up. Yeah, uh, misery. Absolutely. They are the misery machine. There's no doubt about it. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, Logan Airport. That was CTYS. That's the same one that did the Brussels Airport security. That's where the two uh, uh, Belgian uh, Moroccan brothers worked. One uh, was blown up or blew up on the train, and these blew up at the airport of Brussels just recently after Paris. They worked for CTYS. That's what their family said. And I, yeah, I have a talk online about a lecture I gave to some students. Uh, so it's very similar. They work for an Israeli security company. And why would you have uh, these Arabs working there? Because you need these fellows to be to basically channel through security anybody who's heading to Syria. Okay, this is how they built ISIS. Uh, this is how NATO and the United uh -huh, States built uh -huh. ISIS. You get your own citizens, okay, you can trust. You put them in security companies that uh, manage airports, and you can board these guys, even though they may have a criminal record or whatever, you know, criminal record or known terrorist links. You can get them through the security system and the board planes heading into Turkey. Okay, this is how it's been done, and that's what Brussels was all about. Those two brothers were killed. This is part of a mop-up operation to cover their tracks about ISIS, okay? They need to cover their tracks, so they're going to kill key people, and they're going to send them into the expendables, 
Okay, wherever you have expendable people, you blow them up. Serves a warning to terrorize society, basically. So it's very similar to the Brussels. Pretty wild uh, when you think about nine eleven. The security companies at the airport, all owned yeah. and operated by Israeli firms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the same company yeah. in uh, London on, uh, when they had their event in the London bombing. Oh, the right? 7-7 bombings. Yeah, that was the same company doing security for 911 was doing <laughs> for that, that event at the same time, yeah. Oh, my. What a coincidence. Jeez. Not. Uh, it just goes on and on. Now, you think, Yoshi, there's some kind of a, yeah. at least a psychological link with these, these uh, the shooting at UCLA, perhaps, the shooting of the young woman singer, and then the nightclub thing. This is kind of like built up to a, a big crescendo. And now we got apparently four people involved in that club. According to the, the primary shooter, Mateen, he said there were four people involved. He said one sniper and two others. Yeah. Somebody said yeah, that yeah, the yeah. doors were held shut. I can't get this pictured in my mind. I'm not sure if it's from the outside or the inside. It would seemingly be the outside, but if somebody's holding the door shut from the outside, everybody's going to see it. A fellow professor holds the door shut. In other words, if the, there was another shooter in there who shot both the supposed suspect and the professor, it would allow that shooter to get away. Okay. In other words, why would you hold a door when you can easily just shoot through the door and tell whoever's holding the door, right? It's useless. So the story doesn't hold. Very much like Sandy Hook. No wow. witnesses allowed. Wow. And whoever was inside shooting could escape, okay? So, and that's very crucial. Uh, and, and if we look at the connections with the Israelis, you got to understand Joe Lieberman, uh, at, you know, senator, for senator, he's the one who created Homeland Security, DHS, based on the model of Shin Beit, the Israeli state uh, security organization, paramilitary. Uh -huh, force, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, Shin Bet. So DHS yeah. is directly modeled after the Israeli model. Okay, uh, wow. and uh, and right now the former, the first head of DH uh, of uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, Jan Napolitano. Uh, we we'll talk about her in a minute, uh, Miss yeah. Janet Napolitano, who was yeah. uh, very suddenly uh, put in as the president of the University of California University System. Uh, very unusual. Hold on a minute. We'll come right back. Make clear why we have so many problems trying to get genuine science out of Oh, isn't that the truth? Stand by, Yoshi. We'll be right back with Dana after this. Monday get together with Dana Dernford and Yoshi Shimatsu. And uh, all right, uh, Yoshi, so this this is not looking good. I don't know how this is going to shake out, but it looks at the moment if Trump plays his cards right, this will certainly help his campaign. Hillary is having some serious issues. She said earlier that uh, I have forgotten the exact quote, but she said basically that uh, Islam has absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. And she's trying to, to uh, weasel her way out of those words now. It's it's uh, it's all ugly, the whole thing. Well, she's got millions of dollars uh, along with her Clinton Foundation. The, the Clinton Foundation, uh, uh, according uh, major to... Major Arab according, of, of according, Yes, let me, let me do this. According to Joel Skousen, the Clinton Foundation, since its inception, has taken in over $3 billion dollars and we know that the Gulf states alone have put in over a hundred million dollars in the last year or two. Yeah, she's a pawn. She's a pawn of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, she delivers the weapons to them, you know, out of Libya and all that. Kills the U.S. ambassador, has an ambassador killed, and, you know, to, to keep this uh, operation secret and so on. Yeah, these are things that happen. It's very sad. These incidents are planned, and I. Evidence from the of planning comes directly from uh, President Obama, and it, I don't know if you, did you catch the Elkhart Town Hall meeting where he answered 
and is answered to a uh, a gun shop owner. Uh-huh. He says uh, uh-huh. he was had a, he was just in a meeting that day on this was on June first first when all these incidents began with the UCLA shooting. He said he was in the situation room where uh, his security people were talking about uh, American citizens who've been on ISO websites, okay, and that uh, rifle association uh, stopped them from owning a gun. So, and then this is to directly quote him. This this is somebody who is a known ISO sympathizer. And if he wants to walk into a gun store or a gun show right now and buy as many weapons and ammo as he can, mm-hmm. nothing is prohibiting him from doing that, even though the FBI knows who that person is. Right. Does this sound like Omar? Uh-huh. Does this sound like uh, Orlando Omar? This is exactly the script, okay? Uh, uh, President Obama recited the script for Orlando in Elkhart, Indiana, you know, at the start of this campaign. He also said that um, uh, he, one of the things he complained about at Elkhart is that Congress will not allow the Centers for Disease Control to study gun violence. That what struck me as very interesting. In other words, he wants the CDC, which does all this pandemic stuff, to study uh, a social psychological disorder called gun violence. Now, now, does this sound like MK Ultra? He wants to bring out MK Ultra right out into the open, into the CDC, and make it part of medical practice in the United States, you know, public medicine in the United States. Amazing what these people are planning, you know, uh, uh, unchecked, uh, you know, federal, you know, interference. The uh, former UC, uh, 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 UC president before Napoleon, Mark Udoff, you know, Jewish guy, he called for a greater federal role for education, and he brought in the cybersecurity uh, regulations for UC. So, and this paved the way for Janet and Napoleon to come in. So, we're seeing this institutional, you know, regime, basically, federal regime, you know, trying to take over all, uh, all the colleges. All of the cultural venues, you know, your concert halls, wherever young people may be, there'll be this pervasive hand, you know, watching everybody, you know, snooping on everybody, you know, uh, 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 you know checking up on everybody, uh, what kind of Facebook pages they're looking at. So it's quite incredible that this has gone so far. No, I agree. Dana, how's it look up there? What is your media doing about all this? <laughs> Same? Um, Hey, you know, I'm going to go back for one second to that Israeli company. That was called ICTS. Was that company? That was the same company that let uh, the shoe bomber, Richard uh, Reed, uh, on the plane. Now, if people don't understand very much about that, that he got on the plane in Tel Aviv and uh, went to Amsterdam. And then when he came over, he tried to detonate a, a shoe bomb, apparently. Uh, but he was in the bathroom fooling around for like 20 minutes. And it was the same thing. With the uh, underwear bomber, he was let through security by uh, ICTS, that same security company in Amsterdam. Right. And so you see, it's just, you were saying, oh, you'd be surprised how much is orchestrated in order to troll you and to hold you and to uh, get you to do things you don't want to do. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll just end that part of this dialogue on that is that here's how I've seen it. And everybody is already familiar with my narrative, I'm sure, is that for 10,000 Taliban, we got uh, 22,000 drone strikes down in India, Pakistan. We got millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions unaccounted for uh, in several countries to get 10,000 Taliban and who were created by uh, the governments in order to have an opposition to the dictators that were there at the time. And then right. it was used as a rogue element. And that's how we've been controlled. We've always been controlled by setting up the bad guy, controlling the bad guy, f- arming and funding and hoping the bad guy, but we fired 5.5 million rounds a month for nine years to get 10,000 bad guys. And so like, we are controlled <laughs> as we can possibly get. We, we couldn't get any more controlled than what we are with this illusion that we're... Right. Uh, but this radio show is important because you have a chance. You know, we still have those certain types of freedoms. And it's just a big game where I'm the guy who went out on the ocean and done the whole coastline. When I come ashore after... 260 days, 15,000 miles of the coastline, showing an extinction event, I'm arrested and vilified in the media in order to just have a counter-argument. So when anybody ever comes and looks me up, they find the counter-arguments first. 
And but there's no basis. But because it's media, then they give it credibility. And because I'm a, a considered nobody, then uh, I lose out on that for the average person. But anybody that's in the know can see through it, understands who I am. But there's not a lot of that, as you know, Jeff Yoshi and yourselves, right? But that's how the opposition controls people is they'll find a way to get at the other person and just vilify them or marginalize them. That's good enough for the time being. That works. And we don't have all in Trinity are willing to do that for us, obviously. Right. Come troop, yeah. And so they, they have to fake it. And but this is the first time in history, Jeff, you know it yourself, and that's why you succeeded so well, not besides the fact of the work you put in, that Yoshi knows it very well. The media is the medium. Only now, in one sense, it leveled the playing field. In the other sense, we knew the censorship was coming. But what they gave us originally was this illusion of freedom on the internet. And so, when it, for the first five, six, seven years, everybody felt that they were free on the internet. But that was to, to really build that illusion and enforce it. And now, now they got all kinds of ways to censor you. Like in the court papers, I got after uh, was arrested, that the FBI in America and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, uh, private Canadian police department in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, and a university, Victoria, a university of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, uh, used Google to censor me without a warrant. And so <laughs> you don't really have the freedom because here's a handful of uh, these organizations without a warrant. And it's in the court records that they, they censor me on the internet. They censor comments, they censor views, they censor uh, everything about me on the internet at their whim. They don't like something I'm saying, then they get censored. And that's shocking when you think about it. I got 20,000 subscribers, and I could be lucky to get a 1,000 views. But uh, there's several people out there, if they put my videos up on their sites, they're not censored. Mm-hmm. The video will get 3, 4, 10, 20,000 views. Mm-hmm. But it'll never happen to me, to my actual site, even though I got 20,000 subscribers. Right, I'm censored, but I got it in the court documents. So I'll just say, I'll, I'll let it go with that because it won't shut up otherwise. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it's, in, in, in the University of Victoria, that's really critical. This is what I'm saying is that uh, the, the state is taking, uh, you know, education was just yeah. never in the hands of the federal, your own school, right? The county. Uh, I, I'm i still, I'm, college, yeah? you're breaking up again a little bit. Yeah. I'm still a little interested in uh, uh, Janet Napolitano how she got that uh, gig, and they put her in this fabulous uh, residence where the uh, right. the chancellor lives, or the president, well, whatever so her title hushed is. Up. That happened, uh, what, she came in in 2013, was it, yeah. 14? And uh, that was all hushed up by the regents. Uh, and the president of the regents is a Latina journalist. That's really weird, because at the time when she was coming, the Latina press was very small, but she lived in uh, Newport Beach, one of the richest places. She married a Latin uh, millionaire. So very odd that, you know, uh, how this board is, uh, everyone should look at the Board of Regents of UC California. So the full town comes in, and she's going to be pushed to Mark Udoff's proposal mm-hmm. and created the Office of, um, of um, uh, Information Security for the campus, basically, which lays out this incredible set of ordinances, rules for the campus, and is very pervasive, and it's so pervasive, there's so many registration uh, things you've got to do for that. It looks like it's wide open, you know, to the NSA or, mm-hmm. you know, the Pentagon to snoop at any student or professor uh, or whatever. You know, they've already got intellectual property control. Yes. over the professors. Yeah. So universities are becoming captive populations. And this, and you got to understand, University of California, the system, has a quarter million students, two million alums, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, something like 140,000 employees, many of them in the nuclear industry at Lawrence Livermore Lab, okay? Nuclear mm-hmm. workers mm-hmm. designing bombs, you know, weapons. So the, the universities are becoming militarized. That's what's happening. They're becoming militarized. And we're already seeing that at what uh, uh, Dane is facing up there at Victoria. The University of Victoria is doing a lot of this offshore work where there's a lot of surveillance technology being put into the ocean floor. Sensors are being put along the entire uh uh, Canadian coast there, a whole system of uh, military sensors that's all hush up. It's one of the big money-making projects for that university. So again, through hey, uh, uh, the uh, federal Yoshi. contracts, they're being, they're being basically bought out. 
exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, they got three hundred million dollars. Right? That's, thing that's and, actually, and actually my. That was my business plan. That was my business yeah. plan about eight years ago, and yeah. we were in contact with the University of Victoria, and their students were going to identify the animals in, in our. Um, we were going. That that was our exact business plan. <laughs> yeah, I was huh. the first person yeah, that was a in British Columbia to, to ever apply for camera licenses under the ocean. Yeah, I was going to put yeah. 100 cameras in the good. ocean. It was called Marine Channel Productions Limited. So they got $300 that million. That was supposed to be good science, right? Great marine science, and it was hijacked, and now it's used for it's some sort of undersea yeah. surveillance. It's crazy what's going on. And uh, but but I mean that that's the whole. That's another great point. See that I keep forgetting about. Was that's what I was? I was going to put a uh, hundred cameras underwater and charge five dollars uh, for you to watch through the hundred cameras. And because right. it was, you know, I spent fourteen years as a commercial diver, and so I was very mm-hmm. familiar with how many species were out here. And that was just to kick it off. And that technology had matured, and I had that company for a number of years. Then I watched the Discovery Channel, and uh, I was almost ready to go uh, to get the land. We had the leases and everything, applications and that for the cameras and the land and all that. I was the first person to ever even conceive it. And, but I had to talk to fisheries and oceans. And, they, and one of the things they asked me was, uh, what was my business plan if I got you know, all the way through? Was it put 3,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable? And two weeks later on the Discovery Channel, here they were on a ship getting ready to go put out 3,000 kilometers of fiber optic cables in the exact same spots as my uh-huh. business plan. And so I contacted yeah. media. I contacted the media that wrote about it. I contacted Discovery Channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was the University of Victoria that stole my business plan and got $300 million. And, uh, yeah. but that, but it also, it does confirm what I'm talking about and why I'm on the ocean, why I've done the things I've done. It does put some yeah. context in that for anybody who's not familiar was that's how much I love that ocean. And I wanted to share yeah. it with everybody. And that's why well, I, of course, your baby was all, hijacked uh, by Woods Hole. You know, Office of Naval Research, the USA, yeah. not Canada, okay? Doing whatever spooky stuff they're doing out there in the ocean. Instead of, you know, doing studying the animals, which is very necessary now, right? That network is necessary now to understand how Fukushima radiation is, uh, uh, you know, how that kill-off is moving forward. We need that data. We're not getting that data. You know, it's been, science has been hijacked. The universities have been hijacked. Professors are gagged. You know, students are, are manipulated and threatened right. in all sorts of ways. You know, the students are the ones who go to these concerts, right? Who go to these concerts. They, they're living now under a, damn, under a constant threat of being killed and massacred. If you, you take know, radiation what, the, studies huh? in universities on animals, Yoshi, huh? you know, if you look up radiation studies on animals, huh? the universities huh? have all done it and still doing it. But yet they never mention those studies when they're talking about radiation in media or anywhere else. So it's very telling, right? They are doing those yeah. studies, but they're not doing it to tell us. They're doing, and the animals have never survived it. They've never cured, never tried to cure animals with man-made yeah. radiation. Say, but we just we how fast they die, or how slowly they die. You know, or they, they know. Yeah. Oh, they know. Of course, they know. On tritium, yeah, on tritium alone. But, but this, see, what happened that. in Canada very much is modeling. This is a major university there, major marine biology lab there, and you have the law faculty going after Dana, or after Dana Durnford. So the university is becoming very much regimented. used to be departments did different things, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone had their own issues. Now they're all functioning like little military encampments or centers now, you know, uh, fortresses against the interests of the society, just against the interests of their taxpayers. Quite amazing what's happened. And unfortunately, in the United States, they've got to use a massive dose of violence because Americans won't accept those sort of things so easily, right? They're, they're more stubborn than <laughs> and the other people are famously stubborn, independent people. So that's why this massive dose of violence is being, you know, dished out on campus. It's not going to slow down either. There's going to be a cadence of it. And what's happening is mm-hmm. mass desensitization to the whole yeah. process of dying on mainstream media nightly newscasts around the clock. That's what they're bringing home here to the to the U.S. They're showing us here what the Middle East has been seeing for year, 20 years or more yeah. uh, and what Europe is going to be seeing soon enough. Yeah, it, it, is, it is really tough because, you know, all we wanted to do was bring out the real threat that, you know, people, their, their animals, domestic animals or pets, 
and the wildlife, yeah. of course, and the yeah. environment spaces. It should be a simple, straightforward task. So there's meltdowns out there. They're dumping water out of those reactors, and people need to figure out how to defend themselves and how to participate as a Pacific-wide community to contain those meltdowns. Okay, one of the water. only one of the only ways to defend yourself is through supplements and herbs, and yeah. especially. Algae, and I've got the bio superfood from Dr. Michael Kiriak, the uh, Russian scientist, the Ukrainian scientist, I guess, who worked on it after Chernobyl. Bio superfood, you'll find the ads on my homepage. I take it every day. It's proven through Chernobyl use, uh, hundreds of thousands of people, for the four most potent algaes on the planet. And you sent me today a story about how a leading algae scientist, who's an oceanographer, I guess, as well, uh, was was yeah. murdered. Now this is this is not on the East Coast. Yeah. not coincidental. Coast. Yeah, she was with NASA. She studied algae. Yeah, and she knew and about I, the ocean. I, I, she, I think she knew I earlier. In, in my last article, there are scientists who are trying to do it quietly on the side. You know, they're trying to do good work. She knew about the radiation, yeah. Yoshi, and she. I think That's she was right. silenced. I think she was starting to talk. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just incredible. It's incredible what what's going on. This is like intellectual terrorism. Well, look what they're doing to Dana. It's the same thing, but thank God they're yeah. not killing him. Yeah, well, her work would be you know very dangerous to the system if yeah. she works at the heart of the scientific establishment, right? And then no wonder scientists are afraid. It's the same thing that happened to microbiologists who are you know exposing biological warfare. They were just wiped off, you know, wiped off the blackboard basically, right? And. Uh, and now we've seen our first, at least that we know, but the first marine biologist go down now. Robbery and it just popped, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sort of mm -hmm. popped. And it seems that from what I can gather, she was sort of abducted and killed. You know? Taken right out of the parking lot of the, the uh, market she was at. Her car was in the yeah. uh, parking lot. They found her up yeah. behind the building in the woods. Uh, it's sad. Yeah. You know, they, they could, amazing. Dana, I was worried, and I know a lot of people were, when you were on your, your boat trips doing all your research, they could have gotten to you and, and removed you real easily. Yeah, I, I do. I, I worried about that all the time. Oh, I'm I sure you stalked. did. I, I, I know I was stalked a number of times up there. I believe it. Yeah, no, I was. And they were stalking me, all the hotels also. They actually uh, talk about in the blogs, they could put pictures of me in the hotel uh, hallways. And it's bizarre land, right? <laughs> when you think about it in that context, that they contacted the hotels. I had hotels show me emails where they contacted the hotels and, and uh, hotels told them I was a fraudster. Mm -hmm. And here's the hotel looking at this guy coming in their harbor on a boat in the middle of nowhere, out there getting fuel and taking off out again and coming back in by and by, getting a hotel for a few days and taking a break, knowing mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And they're getting, and, and like they're saying, do these people actually understand, Dana, who I am and what where you're to? Because to tell me that you're a fraudster and I'm watching you go back and forth out there with fuel every three or four days and groceries and then coming up here and getting showers and chatting up people out in front of the office. And, and the dive fleet was there at the same time. So they, they were staying at the hotel when I was there. They all knew me. They were all talking about me. Uh -huh. Like a big family there, right? Yeah. But yet here they were at the hotel getting emails saying I was a fraudster. So they, these were these people uh, were at me in every, you know, what did they, they done to me? The CBC and the Globe and Mail. And the Globe and Mail came out with the story before I got arrested. And the Globe and Mail is the biggest uranium stock seller in Canada. They're the major biggest print media in Canada. But they sell stocks, uranium stocks, constantly. So they buy it a couple of weeks before, and then they put it in their paper, and everybody in the community starts buying it. And then a week later, they sell their shares, and they made a whole fortune. They've been doing this forever. But that's who broke the story on me was the big uranium stock company here in Vancouver called mm -hmm. Global Mail. Mm -hmm. See, that's like everything about it over and over and over and over and over is, is connected to the nuclear industry or connected to the players that are working for the industry, which is the one in the scene. Yeah. All right, we're just about out of time. Uh, Yoshi, you want to wrap it up here, and we'll get a final comment yeah, from Yeah, I wish we had Dana. more time to talk about the weather effects, but we we talked about it before, and we'll do it again, you know, this crazy, unusual weather. Hell, a week and a half ago, it was 104 degrees up here, a normal historical average of 74, so it was uh, 30 degrees After higher. heat wave, you know, months ahead of, of time. So, yeah, the, the, the effects are terrible. 
you know, people are being hacked down in dozens of ways besides, you know, slow deaths from radiation. How about the economy? Slow deaths from the economy and sometimes slow not so slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lack of water, you, you name it. You know, yeah. the whole system. It's closing uh, in on us. The, yeah, the, bi- the biosphere is dying, but that system is getting more, the political system more and more repressive. Always. All never right, never slow luck, down. Yeah. Thanks, Yoshi. Uh, yeah, the Canadian Yoshi. government eventually sees the light day and cuts you loose. This is they, ridiculous. This is doing. totally ridiculous. Dana, final comment from you. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thank you for the support. It was, I missed the show last week because I was so a heat wave. I passed up and didn't wake up. My apologies. No problem. All right. We'll talk to you next it's week. Yeah, thanks. Stay well. Thanks for, stay well. Okay, okay Dana. Bye-bye. Good night. Yoshi, talk to you next week. Uh, yeah. you, you should read my email to you about uh, farming. Yeah. Did you read that? Well, my, my, my email service gets, gets shut down routinely every did day. Did you read? Did you get my email about farming? No, I didn't get it yet. No, no. The, the email just gets knocked out. It's, uh, it's in bad shape. The security alert do terrible things. You know, I'll send it again. Part, yeah. You need to yeah, read that. Part here. Uh, yeah, here, here uh, San Francisco, Chicago, New York, Boston, uh, Berlin, and London are just massively being hammered right now. All right. By the, security services so. okay let me know i'll send it right, that's our program tonight on monday we're off and running and uh, god only knows what will happen tomorrow but we'll be back uh, at least we're planning to be back tomorrow night and hopefully you'll join us then uh dv kid terrible tim uh from uh england and we'll get his views on things which are always controversial and more tomorrow night talk to you then take care